Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is the Aberration Note read-through for Sir Edmund Rockwell. Of course, Rockwell is everyone's favourite Cockney chemist and he's been a main character in our note read-through since we started back on the island map. Edmund Rockwell is the creator of all of the recipes and consumables that you can find throughout the map and he's most famous for his mind wipe tonic recipe. Before we jump into this, I just want to say I'm now on Twitter at JamesCG12 so if you use that platform and you want to keep up to date with any upcoming plans for the channel or my stream schedules over on Twitch TV, then drop me a follow there. Thank you. Sociopaths usually have a few common traits that can give them away. Of course, their pathologies can vary greatly, but throughout the story of Rockwell, he has shown a distinct lack of empathy and holds himself in a very high esteem. And you'll often find him looking down on everyone around him. Even back on the original island map, he refers to using real people in his chemistry experiments. And he's pretty much showed little to no remorse in any of his actions that have led him to aberration. When we last caught up with Rockwell, he was on scorched earth with Elena. The character known as Wally Alazard escorted them to the sunken city. And the scorched earth story does not have an ascension for players. But as Wally vaguely explains, the controls for the map were buried there after the obelisks destroyed the city of Nosti. So sit back, relax and enjoy part one of Sir Edmund Rockwell's note read-through on Aberration. I fear even with the unwitting aid of Miss Walker, I still cannot completely control the machines in the Starlight Sanctuary. I believe they have sent us to the correct arc, but I was unable to control precisely where we arrived on it. Alas, that means the location I saw on the Sanctuary is beyond my reach for the time being, along with the molten Edmonium I saw there. Confound it all. Naturally, I cannot confirm that molten substance was indeed Edmonium until I've inspected it with my own eyes. But it simply must be. It looked exactly like my samples did when I attempted to melt them down. Imagine. An entire cavern of the most potent element known to man. The wonders I could create. While the molten Edmonium remains elusive, this underground forest has proven quite illuminating. Both figuratively and literally. Many of this cavern's species are bioluminescent, so out of curiosity, I dissected several of the glowing insects that are common here. After further study, I have concluded that the luminescent fluid found in their posteriors carries something akin to a bioelectrical charge. However, I cannot determine how it is generated. With no place to store it, said charge fades quickly. Curious, curious indeed. What could be the cause of this? With no sunlight to provide the forest with energy, Perhaps the charge comes from the soil. Yes, yes, of course. The Edmonium is the cause. If there are truly molten pools of Edmonium somewhere in these caves, then the Edmonium minerals must have spread throughout the soil over time, allowing its wondrous properties to affect nearby flora and fauna. Even if it's not the direct source of the charge found in this forest's bioluminescent wildlife, it may have incited incremental changes in those species over several generations which then led to their development of an internal charge. How invigorating. I could be standing in the middle of an entire ecosystem that has been absorbing the effects of Edmonium for generations. All of its secrets are mine for the taking. Magnificent. I must admit, I am glad I coerced Miss Walker into accompanying me. Her scientific mind may be far below my own, but she can fire a rifle proficiently enough. I suppose that is no surprise. She is a colonial after all. She's never been terribly ladylike. I hadn't noticed what a foul mouth she has either. Dreadful. However, despite her past deceptions and uncouth vulgarity, I must tolerate her presence for now. The predators here are not to be trifled with. Of course, in my youth, I could have grappled them into submission. Why, I would simply pin their wings behind their backs and drive them into the ground. Yes, I'd give them a truly thorough thrashing. Ah, to be young again. Miss Walker I can tolerate for now, but I cannot abide by this barbarian. I cannot fathom how she even lives, much less how she ended up here. A primitive mind like hers could never have operated the contraptions in the Starlight Sanctuary. Yet here she stands. And worst of all, she wears a suit of Edmonium armour. The very thing I seek has already been claimed by some savage, sword-wielding tart. It's an outrage. Such a beautiful product of science should not be sullied by her blood-stained hands. No, Rockwell. You must be calm. If she senses hostility, she will surely kill you on the spot. Yes, for now I must bide my time and learn what I can. Whoever constructed this armour, I must find them. 
astounding. The remarkable armour was but the tip of the iceberg. The barbarian woman has escorted us home to her new masters, and I can nary take a step without finding some wondrous new piece of technology. Much of it is relying on the power of Edmunium. The casual manner in which they use and refer to these wonders leads me to believe that while they're deeply familiar with the marvellous metal, they cannot grasp the depths of its potential. Yes, Rockwell, this was well worth tolerating Miss Walker and her savage companion. I shall learn what these supposed future men know, and I'll take it many steps further. The village has a vast supply of Edmunium, far more than my own poultry samples. In this quantity, I can almost hear it singing to me as I study it. It pulses with energy at such an enchanting rhythm that it's hard to tear my eyes away from it. The villagers here refer to it as element. Nonsense. Everything is an element. Did they simply forget to name it? They've also been learning what they know of the charge. That it is common in this place, which I made a note of earlier. Their own studies confirm my suspicions that it is a result of the Edmonium that permeates the caverns. That makes it worth researching. Obtaining detailed information from these villagers is like drawing blood from a stone. The red-haired woman, Diana, has been pleasant enough in answering my queries, but she is no scientist. Her naivety makes that quite evident. I simply must convince one of these future men to place me into one of their research teams. That's where I'll really gain some ground. Unfortunately, they seem rather skeptical of my scientific prowess. Bah. Ridiculous. I don't care what year they hail from. I am Sir Edmund Rockwell. A mine like my own only comes once a millennium. It should be their honour to have me amongst their ranks. The nerve of these people. I've never heard such arrogance and disrespect directed towards a worthy colleague. I finally convinced Diana to let me partake in the villagers research and experiments and I've been treated like an ignoramus. These so-called scientists dare talk down to me. They dare to underestimate me. Fools. The lot of them. Well, I dare say I don't need them. Now that I have access to their facilities and supplies, I can research charge and money them just fine without their aid. Soon enough, my knowledge shall surpass their own. Then we shall see who is primitive. Confound it all. Why am I progressing so slowly? These scientists are no more intelligent than I, yet they make continuous progress while my own research continues to flounder. It's just a matter of experience, that's all it is. They're more familiar with their tools and they have more information at their disposal. Were I in their shoes, I would have finished that ridiculous project of theirs months ago. I must work harder to account for my handicap. I shall eat and sleep in the lab. I shall allow for no distractions. Not until my so-called peers have learned to respect the name of Sir Edmund Rockwell. At last, success. I've finally been able to convert this charge into proper electricity. Subsequently, I used it to create not only a charged battery, but a lantern as well. It was a simple matter, really. It's baffling that these supposed scientists haven't managed it already, based on their surprise when I showed them my new invention. My earlier suspicions were correct. They'd barely scratched the surface of charge and Edmunium's full potential. Soon enough, I'll have surpassed their understanding of both. Yet if they expect me to share the fruits of my research with them, they are sadly mistaken. Those who doubt the genius of Sir Edmund Rockwell shall never reap its rewards. I have at last persuaded Diana to show me this grand project those bumbling scientists are working so hard on. I am hardly impressed. If I had to guess, I would say that the Gateway Project is merely aping the Transformer platforms present at the base of every obelisk. And crudely at that, everyone is quite excited about it. The small-minded simpletons. Why are they so eager to leave this place? where the impossible is within reach. They speak of escaping as though it was some kind of prison, when in reality, it's a land of unparalleled promise and possibility. Thank goodness this Diana woman is so agreeable. She seems to view me as her personal responsibility. As a result, she has served my whims rather well. All I need to do is assume the guise of kindly, curious old man, and I can persuade her to see my every need. I've nearly convinced her to escort me to the lower caverns, where the molten Edmunium is said to flow in abundance. Those caverns were the reason I came here in the first place, and I am certain that an excursion into the depths would yield an invaluable insight. I need only to push and prod just a bit more. Once I upgraded my charge lantern prototype to be vastly more portable and efficient, 
The village council could ignore my petitions no longer. I shall be accompanying an expedition to the lower caverns post haste. At last, I shall be able to observe the Abmonium in its rawest, most natural state. Marvellous. I can hardly contain my excitement, though I must make an effort to. The barbarian woman has been glaring at me for days. I suspect if she could, she would watch my every move and probably forbid Diana from speaking to me. Fortunately, Miss Walker has been distracting her with trivialties, but I must still be cautious. That savage will turn to violence on a whim, and I must not provoke her. Thankfully, it seems I shall get a reprieve from all those nasty glares I've been receiving. Miss Walker has taken her pet barbarian with her on a fool's errand she's running to the obelisk. Good riddance to bad rubbish, I say. I didn't bother to learn all the details of Miss Walker's mission, but it seems clear to me now that the obelisks are a red herring. It is the Edmonium that matters. So if she and her violent little lackey want to play the explorer, so be it. In the meantime, I shall journey into the heart of these caverns to conduct real science and make real progress. Excelsior. And that concludes part one of the journey for Sir Edmund Rockwell on Aberration. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here for more Ark Survival content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.